Good morning. The Lord be with you. We gather in our Lord's house to hear his word, to worship him, to receive his gifts, uh, this holy name. Last Sunday I was uh, privileged to uh, bring greetings from you uh, to the congregation in Aurora, Nebraska, our cross of Christ, where Tim Wells was ordained and installed as their pastor. It's a brand new mission congregation. Uh, they have a very good start, and uh, Tim will be their very first full-time pastor. So, uh, a joy to celebrate that. Don was there also, the folks, and, and uh, they expressed their appreciation both uh, that we could be there and also just for the role that we had um, as his intern uh, host congregation. And it's good to see how he has grown and, and his uh, uh, five uh, daughters. Uh, Elizabeth, the oldest, is going to be in sixth grade. And John is doing well, so um, anyhow, um, they sent their greetings to you this morning as well. As we uh, begin this time of worship, we invite you to uh, greet those around you with the peace of the Lord. Thank you. 
Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God. He bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Sunday after 
Pentecost for us this day comes from Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah tells that it is not just the children of Abraham, the Jews, who will be part of the kingdom of God, but also that foreigners, Gentiles, other nations will be included in God's kingdom, welcomed there. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and who holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Be to God. By forward at this time. Came down to me. 
Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were, sent to me from Caesarea. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then... God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent. And they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also, God has granted repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Holy Gospel as we sing the Alleluia's. <laughs>
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All of us, I'm sure, have at one time or another heard some of the light bulb jokes that go around. How many Norwegians does it take to change a light bulb? If you don't know, ask Arlo after church. Or how many Germans does it take to change a light bulb? Or how many lawyers does it take? Or you have your own uh, jokes that you know about that. There's also, though, one about us. How many Lutheran Church Missouri Synod people does it take to change a light bulb? Change? Would we want to change? Well, I think in our text, that same kind of attitude, change, is reflected in what's going on with Peter and with the Jews. They had grown up with one kind of thinking. And the changes that Jesus brought were a challenge to that thinking. They weren't so ready to change. If we look at our text today, um, we see this thought that, that grace was limited, that it was exclusive, that it was just for a few. In that chapter, prior to our text, it recounts what Peter has done, this vision and, and all of that. And, and then in our chapter, chapter 11, Peter comes to Jerusalem, and, and the circumcision party jumps all over him. The circumcision party, it wasn't a party like a, a birthday party, a celebration party, a fall festival party. No, it was a party like the Democratic Party or the Republican Party or a group of people with a political agenda. Yes, hard to believe. Back then there were factions in the church, but there are today too. But this circumcision party of Peter's day, they believed that in order to believe in Jesus, to, in order to be accepted by God, you couldn't just believe in Jesus, you first had to become a Jew. In every way, you had to be circumcised and follow all of the Old Testament rules and regulations, especially all the ceremonial ones. They did not know or understand that Jesus had kept and fulfilled them and, and made them obsolete. And so they jumped on Peter. Peter, you did what was wrong. You went to a Gentile's house and you ate with them. And, and to eat with a Gentile was was a way of saying, I'm in complete agreement and there's nothing spiritually wrong with this person. And you went to this house and ate with them as if they were one with us. Peter, what were you doing? And Peter explains. He says, yeah, I know. I understand what you're saying. But, but listen to me. He says, I had this vision. I saw a sheet coming down from heaven and it was full of animals. Many of them unclean ones that the Old Testament spoke against eating. And yet I heard the voice of God saying to me, Peter, kill and eat of these animals. And of course I said to God, no way, I've never done that. But God said to me, what I have made clean, don't you call unclean, don't you call unacceptable what I am giving to you now for food as a gift. Three times, Peter said this happened, not just once, three times, confirming it to be true. And then on top of that, as soon as the vision was over, here come some Gentiles knocking at the door, saying, Peter, we've been sent to take you back to our master, back to Caesarea. And Peter says, and the Holy Spirit was there nudging me, saying, Peter, go with them. It's okay. And so he goes, gets to the man's house, and he says, hey, Peter, 
I've seen an angel. An angel of God has come to me, told me I should send for you, specifically you, and that you would bring to me and to my whole household, we who are not Jews, not sons of Abraham, we who are Gentiles, that you would bring to us a message of salvation, a message that would save me, my wife, my children, my servants, my whole household. Peter, what message has God sent you to bring to us? What an invitation. What a work of God. God changing Peter's mind, Peter's understanding, Peter's heart. Peter has been worried about trying to keep the Old Testament, Old Testament ceremonial law, which of course is impossible like any of the law to keep. But now Peter is trying to keep something that is both impossible and unnecessary because it's been fulfilled by Jesus. That Old Testament religious law, all of the sacrifices, the fact that, that we couldn't worship today because the Old Testament says worship on Saturday, on the Sabbath. But we're worshiping on Sunday. We're not breaking God's law. All of these ceremonial laws fulfilled, completed, ended by Jesus, who kept them like we never could. God is, is teaching Peter a new thing. His good news is for all. The circumcision party, they had thought that God only wanted Jews. You had to be circumcised first, become a Jew first, that grace was limited only to the Jews. Whether you were a Jew by birth or whether you then became a Jew by faith in the cutting of your body. That grace was only for those, only for some, only some deserved to be in God's kingdom. That God only wanted certain people, but not all, to be saved. We, of course, know much better, don't we? We know that God wants to save all. And yet, sometimes, if you're like me, perhaps we find creeping into our thoughts, judgmental thoughts about others. Yeah, I understand people around the world, but, but the people in, in my town, in, in my neighborhood, who don't really act like me, who have different values, seem different, do they? Should they be in my church? Should I invite and welcome them? I don't think they fit in. I don't think they would seem to be in place if they came here. I don't know if I want to invite them. I'd rather keep God's grace limited for those like me. And when such thinking or attitudes comes to us, we're much like that circumcision party, or we're much like Peter before the vision that, that grace is limited for certain ones. But the truth and, and the second point of our message and the main point of our text is this, that grace is for all, God's grace. Jesus came to the cross for everyone. The circumcision party, they should have known that. We heard Isaiah in our Old Testament reading speaking about the foreigners who would come not to be circumcised, but would come to God's house to love and worship Him. And it was not just Isaiah, but the prophets as a whole spoke this message. Elisha, Elijah sent to do miracles to Gentiles, foreigners. When there were plenty of people in Israel, they could have helped. God was sending the message even in the Old Testament. And, and of course, the circumcision party and Peter, they knew about Jesus. Peter was with Jesus when the centurion came and said, heal my servant. Jesus says, I'll come. 
And the centurion says, no, you don't have to come, just say the word. And what does Jesus say? This man has faith. This Gentile Roman centurion has faith unlike anyone I've seen among the Jews. Anyone in Israel, anyone who is a son or daughter of Abraham. And that's not the only person that Jesus commanded, who was a Gentile, whose faith was great. Think about the woman who said, yes, but even the dogs eat the crumbs. And now in Acts, Peter's vision. These animals that were not supposed to be eaten in the Old Testament. But now God is calling clean. All those Old Testament laws, they pointed to Jesus. And Jesus kept and fulfilled them. And so now pork is clean. Bacon is good. And it's a new and radical concept. And for the people of that day, just as radical as the thought that Gentiles could be saved. That Gentiles could simply become Christians without becoming Jews first. Now we say, sure, the Jews were the ones who rejected Jesus. The Jews were the ones who put him to death. Why should people become Jews? But in that day... It was hard for them to understand, hard to see. You could simply believe in God. And yet, what was the sign in our text? Peter goes and speaks. And just as he began speaking, what happens? The Holy Spirit falls on those Gentiles. They're speaking in tongues. We read in chapter 10. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. It's a Pentecost for the Gentiles in that house. And Peter says, there was no difference. Them and us, both filled with the Holy Spirit. Who was I to stand in God's way? Who was I to say, no, you can't believe in Jesus? How ridiculous. And our text says, even the circumcision party fell silent. There were no more objections they could raise. They heard, they understood. God was doing a new thing. There would be no more need for a circumcision party because circumcision was no longer necessary to be a believer, to be a Christian. And in fact, the last verse of our text, they glorified God saying, then, wow, to the Gentiles also, God has granted repentance that leads to life. They glorified God because Gentiles, the majority of the world, the Jews were a minority, but to the rest of the world also, salvation, repentance. God is granting this repentance that leads to life to repent of our sins, to forsake any other gods, to trust in Jesus, to be given the gift of faith which comes through the Holy Spirit. And Peter and Paul would go forth into the world as missionaries and the other disciples as well even to our ancestors. And because they believed, we're here today. We, too, believe. For we are Gentiles. We're not Jews by heritage. But the Holy Spirit has come to us. You received the Holy Spirit. You were filled with the Holy Spirit on the day of your baptism, on the day when God's Word came into you to give you the gift of faith. And the Holy Spirit continues to come to you in the supper and through his word. Yes, we, to the people of Parker's Prairie also, God has granted repentance that leads to life. We have received that gift. 
But that also means this, my friends, that gift is not just for those who are here this morning, but to all of the unbelievers in Parker's Prairie, in our surrounding communities, to all of these Gentiles. Also, God has granted the promise of salvation. The good news that we have, we are to share with those who are very much like us and those who are very different from us. You see, every person has a soul and every soul is valuable and loved by God. Your soul, my friend, precious to the Lord, but also every other soul. Yes, we are missionaries. We are Peter's and Paul's sent to the world to be witnesses to rejoice in the Holy Spirit and what we have received, but also to share that great message, the message of salvation with all the world. Yes, to the people of our community also. God has granted the gift of salvation. Jesus died on that cross that all might repent that all might believe, that all might be saved through the power of the Holy Spirit. To us also. And that, my friends, is the way that it is this 13th week after Pentecost. In the year of our Lord, 2016. In Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds through faith in him to life everlasting. Amen.
as God calls, may we so respond. We bring now our gifts and offerings to the Lord. Also, uh, if you would sign the friendship register, the red folder in your pew at this time. In our prayers this morning, uh, as noted in the bulletin, we include uh, the families of Delphi and Fredenberg, uh, Ralph's mother who was called home, um, also uh, Laurel Riedel's sister, uh, Donna Riedel Brendan, uh, called home last Sunday. We pray for God's comfort uh, for these families. Also in our prayers, uh, we include Dale Bensky, who is on hospice and uh, very near to the end of his life. We pray for um, peaceful homecoming for him and, and for God's strength uh, with his family. Also, uh, as many of you know, uh, Pastor Ben received a call to teach at the Lutheran High School in Milwaukee, and uh, he sent a letter that we'll read at the end of the service, uh, but in the letter he is sharing that he is accepting the call to go to Milwaukee, and so this morning we'll include both him and, uh, of course, the people of St. John's and Garfield uh, in our prayers. We rise for prayer. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that the gospel is not limited or just for a few, but that your Son, Jesus, died for all. That there are not hoops or obstacles that, that we must do to become worthy or to be accepted in order to be saved but simply the gift of faith that you give is all that is required. Help us to rejoice in our status. Gentiles welcomed into your kingdom who have received the Holy Spirit, who believe and trust in you. Keep us always in the true faith until life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us to be witnesses and lights, even in our own community, even to those who have seemed different from us, that we would value every single soul as one whom you have made and desire to spend eternity with. Use us, dear Lord, as your hands and feet and voices. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray that you would be with Pastor Ben, in the new call that you have given to him and that he has accepted, that you would bless him as he transitions this week and moves to Milwaukee and begins to teach school there, that you would bless his ministry and his teaching. We thank you for the gifts that you have given to him to accomplish this. And we thank you, dear Lord, for his time among us and all the ways he has shared his gifts and talents. We pray, Lord, for wisdom as we look to the future and the ministry in this place and Dear Lord, we especially hold up our brothers and sisters at St. John's, that you would be with them, surround them with your peace, and that you would provide for them the continued shepherding and guiding, that you would reveal to them your plans for them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of life and for the 86 years that you have given to your servant Merle on this day. We pray for your continued blessings and that you would draw him always close to you, Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Gracious Lord, we pray for those who are ill, even for those for whom death draws near. Lord, we commend each one to your care and pray for your work in their lives as you know best. We pray for Dale, Jeff, Lori, Mary, for Geneva, Ione, Pat, Colleen, Char, Carla, for Mary, Janice, Les, Joanne, Virginia, Diane, Aiden, Jackie, Beth, and Lori. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you give life and you take it. Holy and blessed is your name. We pray for comfort for the families of Delphine and Donna, and for all who mourn, surround them with your presence, mercy, love, and healing grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks also this day for those who have been among us these past years and who now head off to college. 
We thank you, Lord, for the gifts that you have given to them. We pray that you would bless them as they go to this new phase of their lives, and especially, Lord, to those who are heading to the colleges of our churches, that you would bless uh, this time, these years, the education that they receive, that you would mold and shape them for the vocations that you have chosen for them. Lord, in your mercy. In your Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace.
at Concordia and, uh, as you start college. The, um, uh, thanks to everybody for their helpful salad supper on Friday. We had enough food, not by a lot, but enough for everybody to eat, and um, 150 people and uh, well over $1,000 that we raised for uh, Wilton Island Camp in Capitalis. On the calendar this week, uh, Tuesday, our block party meeting at 7. Our block party is two weeks from today, and uh, so we thinking about who you might invite. There's some flyers on the counter you can take to invite people. Uh, we need a few people to bring bars, um, and just to also if you're willing to come on Tuesday and, and uh, help with the last planning, or there's a, a working sign-up sheet you want to help in the kitchen, um, any of that would be appreciated. On Wednesday, our church council meets at 7. And then uh, we're adding one thing to the schedule for Wednesday evening. Uh, Pastor Ben has said that he'd be able to be with us Wednesday evening. And so uh, starting at 6.30, from 6.30 to 8, will be kind of just a farewell, informal farewell time. Uh, Wednesday evening, 6.30 to 8. Maybe uh, if anybody's interested in uh, doing some bars or coffee or help in the kitchen, let me know as, as you leave. And, uh, but just kind of informal time. Uh, council will be meeting during some of that time, but um, uh, Wednesday, 6.30 to 8. And then at 8 o'clock, he's going to do a, one last uh, ACT uh, Bible study class with ACT uh, Youth Wednesday evening. And then uh, we'll be leaving. Uh, he'll start a week from tomorrow uh, teaching in Milwaukee. Our, uh, that day, the 22nd of August, that also will be our voters meeting. Monday night's kind of a strange time for voters meeting for us, but... Uh, it was like the only time it seemed to work between my schedule and, and our chairman's schedule, and so we decided we're going to try that. So don't forget a week from Monday, voters meeting at 7. And then uh, finally, just uh, this letter to read to you from uh, Pastor Ben. To the family of God at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Parker's Prairie, greetings to you in Christ. As we are taught from Scripture, God at all times leads us and takes care of us according to his will as a faithful shepherd. We pray constantly that his will is done among us even though we are often not aware of what his plans are and we know that we do not control the future or the paths that our lives will take. It is a difficult discipline of the faith but we prayerfully commend to God's care the business of providing for us and guiding us knowing that he has promised to do so in complete and perfect love. As many of you may already know, I have recently received a call to teach theology full-time as a teacher and chaplain at Milwaukee Lutheran High School in Wisconsin. This call came quite unexpectedly as their former theology teacher just recently took a call in July, and the school is attempting to fill the position in time for classes to begin August 22nd. I've been prayerfully considering this call, while I've also continued to think about the current call I have to St. John and Garfield and the work that I've been privileged to do among the members of Emmanuel for the past four years in adult Bible studies, subbing, and working among the youth of this congregation. I greatly appreciate the prayers and support that you have offered on my behalf during this difficult time of consideration. While it brings me a great amount of grief to think of leaving the people of this area, I decided to accept the call to teach at Milwaukee Lutheran High School. There is a great opportunity there to share the faith on a daily basis in the classroom setting, and I feel that this is where I can best serve the Lord and His church on earth. I love the people of this congregation very much. It has been a great pleasure to serve among you, even in addition to my time here as vicar. I am immensely grateful for the time I have spent serving alongside Pastor Lee, been a great mentor and friend to me, and I feel very privileged to have been able to spend so much time among the faithful youth of this congregation. I pray that God will continue to richly bless this congregation in the future, and I rejoice with you that we have his promise to always guide and bless his church, caring for it as a father tenderly cares for his beloved children. Love in Christ, Pastor Benjamin Shem. Again, uh, Wednesday evening, if you are able, and pass the word to those who aren't here as well. Uh, Wednesday evening, 6.30 to 8, uh, informal time of, of uh, gathering and uh, sharing and saying goodbye. The Lord be with you. Keep you in his care this coming week.